Hi, I'm Andy. Thanks for watching. This video, we're going to discuss how to visually examine a control board for failure. Make sure that your refrigerator is unplugged for these tests. The tools that you'll need are a quarter inch nut driver for taking this panel off and a flat blade screwdriver for removing the control board. Let's get to work. Using your quarter inch nut driver, remove the bolt at the bottom and the two at the top. Remove the panel, set it aside. Now that we've removed the cover, you can see the control board. I'll take you in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm looking at. All right, so when we're looking at the board, near the top, left, and then just lower of that, you'll see four capacitors. Two short ones on top, two tall ones to the lower right. These are most prone to fail on this particular control board. They look like Coke cans and they should be flat on top where it's silver. If you find that these have pooched out on top or if the canister or the cylinder itself has bubbled up and is, uh, is bulged, it's a failed capacitor. Now there also should not be goo coming out of the bottom. Um, so that's the typical failures. One of these four or all four of them have bulged out on top. That's a failed control board. You either need to rebuild it or get a new control board. Now, just to the right of these capacitors, you'll see two green resistors. These are the resistors for your fan motor circuit. So you've got your evaporator, which is on the left, and your condenser fan, which is the fan behind your refrigerator. These um, resistors, a lot of times, will turn brown or black. And the reason why is there's actually a failed uh, fan motor that has caused your board to fail. So if you find this particular failure, you not only need to um, replace the control board, but you also need to replace the associated fan motor to go along with that burn resistor. The last visual inspection will actually be on the back of the control board. So let me show you how that's done. To visually inspect for a burned solder joint, we're gonna need to look on the opposite side of this control board. So in order to do that, we need to remove all of the wires from the board by gently pulling on the plug itself. It's best not to, to pull on the wires. Once these are removed, you'll have a green ground connection, which you'll just pull straight towards you. Also at the bottom, it's connected. Then there's two connectors down here at the bottom as well. And this light blue one, you'll pull down on as you're wiggling back and forth. So now that you've got all the connectors disconnected from the control board, there's gonna be four white anchor pins and I'll show you how these come off. I'll uh, get you in a little bit closer. You'll need your flat blade screwdriver to depress a pin. So you'll have four of these white connectors. And you notice there's a little leg that sticks out. What you need to do is depress that by pushing in with your flat blade. And that, that allows you to pull the green portion of the board out towards you. So there's two near the top and two near the bottom. You'll repeat that process for all four. So the locations for these pins, one here, one here, one right here, one right here. Once 
once all four of those are released, you should be able to pull your board straight out. The burned solder joint that we're going to be inspecting is on the back side of this largest relay, kind of shaped like a backwards L. Flip it over, and if it's burned, it'll be noticeably visible. You've got these three smaller pins, which are typically not burned, but then it's gonna be one of the three larger ones below it. Usually this one right here that will be burned. And you'll be able to tell, there'll be quite a bit of carbon buildup. Looks like a small bonfire happened right there, or sometimes it's just the solder has melted. Now, if that's the case, some people are tempted just to add solder to that and get it working again and it may work temporarily, but um, that burned solder joint is an indicator that the relay itself is getting weak. It's running at too high of resistance, causing too much heat, and thus you get the melted solder joint. So um, if you find that it's burned in that spot, either you need to rebuild the control board or buy a new one. To replace the board, reverse order. All the major plugs go up top. Line it up with the anchor pins and push down on the control board until you hear them snap into place. And these plugs only go back in one direction, so that's the nice part. You don't have to worry about get them, getting them mixed up. Push your connectors back on. Reinstall your ground wire on the upper left terminal and the lower left terminal. The light blue connector, push up on that. And the J1 connector in the lower right. Now we can reinstall our control board cover. Line up the bolt holes and install your quarter inch nuts. There you have it. That's how you visually inspect the common failure points for a GE side-by-side -side control board. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any questions. If you have not already done so, please be sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Helps the channel a lot.